five, four, three, two, one. And here you are with Cumbergoing Tea. Oh my goodness. Hey guys. Hey, hey, hey. So great to be here. Uh, welcome to my Game of Thrones Rewind. I'm so excited to talk to you today about this crazy episode. Which episode is it? Uh, I don't know. It's the second one of the season. I don't know what the name of it is. Whatever. First of all, I'd like to thank Smile Time for letting us use their awesome studio. And thank you guys for coming on. If you would like to ask me questions a little bit later on when we get to the question portion, be sure that you have a little webcam and you're on Google Chrome. We're going to do about 20 minutes of me talking about the episode, all the different scenes, what I thought about it. Then we're going to open it up to questions. So without further ado, let's get started with Game of Thrones. Okay, so my perspective on this show is obviously I'm a book reader. Uh, I'm one of those jerks. You know, you can call me a jerk all you want. And uh, I knew that when we ran out of book material that I felt like the quality of the writing of the show was going to go down a little bit and become a little more, you know, TV writing. And I feel like that's really kind of what happened. And it really shows in this episode in particular. Uh, it's got me a little bit a little bit worried, but not like I'm still here. I'm still there's watching. Liked, right? Well, there's definitely things that I liked. Um, there's definitely things that I liked about the episode. So let's get into it. First up, we have Bran. We finally get to see Bran. We didn't even see him like all last season, I don't think. And it's so funny um, that, like for me, like Bran, like every time I see him, he's like like 20 years older. Like now he's like got two kids and like a house or something like that guy like keeps growing. It's super ridiculous. Um, and we also get to see the Three-Eyed Raven, uh, Max Van Sydow. Love seeing him in the mix. He's such a wonderful actor. I do wish though that he looked more crazy because in the books, uh, the Three-Eyed Raven, he's like, you know, in the roots of the tree and like the, the roots are like growing in him and growing through him. And it's like, he kind of like, when I think of him, I think of like the Mushroom King from like that crappy Mario movie. <laughs> I think Lance Henriksen was the Mushroom King. Like he should look all gross like that, but whatever. That's like super picky. Uh, I did really appreciate in the scene having the flashback and getting to go back in time and seeing Liana, like when I saw the girl uh, come up on the horse, I was like, oh, it's Liana, it's Liana. So it was it was a special treat to see that. Um, but the only other thing I kind of had a problem with in this scene was definitely the child of the forest. Uh, we have switched characters. They got a new person, and now it seems like a full-grown lady, because I think last season they had cast a, like an actual child. And I get it, like children grow up and like you can't get them to stay the same, but I felt like this this iteration of the Child of the Forest, I can't remember her name exactly, but she kind of looked like uh, a poster for like a MAC cosmetics like thing that they're putting out with new colors. Like she looked like, I didn't like the art direction on her. Um, so let's throw up a poll. Let me know if you think that if the Child of the Forest looks whack or not. I think she looks kind of whack. You let me know. I like how they had her last season. It was it's pretty lame. All right, so moving on, we're going to go to the wall, uh, back with uh, Jon Snow and the Onion Knight and this brewing situation happening. Uh, and I was uh, super excited when um, Tormund Giant Spain showed up. I was like so excited to see the giant like busting through that wall and then grabbing that dude and like smushing that dude. Like that was like so much fun. Um, anytime you can put giants in there, like the giants aren't in the book as much, but please like show me giants, like anytime, like anytime I'm not going to complain about seeing a giant. Uh, it was so much fun. And also Tormund Giantsbane, like in, in the books, like I didn't really love his character that much. I mean, he was cool, but I wasn't like into him. But in the show, I really love this actor who's playing him. I think he's like super cute. I love seeing him in his like ginger beard, like whenever I can. So more Tormund Giantsbane. I have no problems with him. Now let's cut to King's Landing. So uh, we have another giant smushing a guy, which is awesome because we got two giants smushing dudes in this fucking episode. Uh, you have the, the Franken Mountain taking care of that guy who's like talking all that shit about Cersei. Like that was super awesome. Like Franken Mountain is really scary. But then again, like part of me is like, I wish I had a Franken Mountain to just follow me around and like do my bidding like Cersei. Like that's kind of pimping, I must say. Uh, oh, oh, all right. So a lot of you guys, it's about 50-50. All right. It's a little over. All right. So Child of the Forest, you know, 
we can agree to disagree there. Um, <laughs> so we have Marcella's uh, funeral as well. Uh, the sparrows are there. Jamie's finally confronting the head sparrow guy. God damn it, I hate religious zealots. I just hate zealotry, and I don't know what they're going to do with these stupid sparrows, but I hope that they are just destroyed, all of them. <laughs> like, they're just such a bummer. Like, there's such a bummer. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's no good. And it was also, I did enjoy the scene where Tommen comes to Cersei, and he's like, I need... I need your help because I don't know what to do. And like, it's, it, it is, even though Cersei's been such a bitch, like, it is nice that like her and her son are bonding and maybe they can have a relationship. I don't know. Maybe she can like this whole experience has softened her a little bit and like she can be more, uh, since she's been humbled a little bit, maybe she'll be a little bit cooler this time. We'll see. So next up, we had Marine. We have Tyrion and Varys and they're still trying to figure everything out. Um, you know, the ships were burned last last deal. So, like, they're not going anywhere. They're committed to staying here. Uh, they find out about the dragons and that they're not doing well. And a uh, drunken Tyrion gets the idea to go down there and just let them free. And I thought that, like, I mean, I felt like those dragons totally would have ate him. Like, I don't know if I believe them, like, not eating that dude. But it was kind of cool anyways. And the dragons looked so awesome. Like, when he first sees that dragon... And, like, he, the dragon opens his mouth and there's the fire, but he's just, like, keeping it in there. You know, it was, like, that was super sick. Uh, I really like seeing the dragons. And I'm glad that they're free now. Like, I'm glad that they're going to roam around and do whatever. I hope that they – I will assume that they'll probably go find Daenerys and, like, help her out. We'll see. Like, that's an interesting question. Is like, are, the, are these dragons going to come into play later now that they're going to be free? I would suspect so. I'm excited to see where that goes. Um, cut to Bravos. We have Arya. She's still no one. She's a little beggar girl, a little blind beggar girl. And there wasn't much going on in that scene. Uh, Jacken shows back up. Everybody likes Jack and Hagar. Like, he's sweet. Like, that guy's awesome. So, again, even though he's not really in the books a whole bunch, I do like that actor a lot, and I'm glad that they keep using him because um, he's super dope. So we'll see what happens with Arya. You know, again, I'm not, I, I just had higher hopes for the Bravo story. I thought it was going to be a lot cooler because in the books, there's just so much rich detail about like the docks and like being a, a fish merchant and all this like really cool stuff that I was really excited to see. Um, but let's move on from that. There's not a lot to talk about. So then let's cut to the north. Uh, we have uh, the Boltons. It's a boy break out the, the balloons and the cigars, I guess. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I've made it no joke that, like, I'm not the biggest fan of how Ramsey Bolton uh, is in this series. I think he's too much of a mustache twirler, you know. I'm so evil. Like, it's just, he's not a believable character to me. So he's not fun. He's just a fucking bummer. Like, he's just a bummer. He's just a bummer. And then, you know, he just, like, kills his dad is gonna go storm the wall it's like you have no idea like i can't wait to see his demise um he's just bumming me out in general and like when she handed him that baby i was like is he really gonna throw that baby in a brazier like i just started laughing i was like uh and then like the dog thing it's just like he's too evil like please like please please like uh like it's just dumb so for all of you out there uh, do you guys hate Ramsey Bolton as much as I do? Like, do you just want to see him, like, get fucking murdered? Uh, please, let me know. So, yes, okay. So now we're back with uh, Theon and Sansa and Brienne. Uh, now, my question, okay, so Theon's like, when he's like, I'm going to leave, I was like, where the fuck are you going to go? Like, nobody wants you, Theon. Like, are you going to go kill yourself? Because, like, that's the only fucking recourse that I see for you if you leave these people. But uh, I guess that's that's not what's going to happen. He's going to go back to, back to Pike, which is really interesting because now we're finally getting into the king's moot. And this is something that is from the books uh, that we haven't seen in the show at all. It's kind of some of the last little bits of the books that we haven't seen on the show. And the king's moot is where in Pike, you have all, you know, all the different people who want to claim, like, I want to be the king. Everybody shows up, and then everybody says their claim, and then they have lots, and then people vote, and then whoever wins the vote, then they get to be the king of the Iron Islands. Speaking of vote, you got another poll up. Um, yes. Okay, I'm glad that you guys hate Ramsey as much as I do. I'm glad it's not just me, because I feel like I would be surprised if 
people were digging this character because he sucks so bad. Uh, it's that it can't just be me. Um, I was excited to see Yara. Uh, I love Yara. I think she's so dope. I mean, I guess because you know I got that same like warrior thing. Like I don't know, I'm into that whole deal. So I was happy to see her. I wish that she could just be the heir and like take over because she's obviously like badass and should be doing that. But whatever, I guess you know female leadership. Fuck that. Well, that's another thing that's really interesting is if Theon comes back, then I mean he's the heir. But the okay, so if Pike won't let a woman rule them, then they're certainly not going to let a eunuch rule them either. So like I highly doubt, and he doesn't want to rule. Like he doesn't want that shit. So that's not going to happen. Um, it was cool to see the crow's eye, Euron, the brother of Balin Greyjoy. I don't believe in the books that we see Euron throw Balin off the uh, off the thing. We just hear that he fell off. And then later on, it's kind of subtly put together that like, oh, Euron just showed up. He obviously had something to do with it. I think if I'm remembering correctly, um, I wasn't really impressed with how he looked. I mean, there's all that rain, but like I thought he would look way cooler. And isn't he supposed to have like one eye or something? Like, I don't know. It was so dark in there. Um, but Pike looked amazing. I was really excited to see like the bridges and stuff like that. I really enjoyed that. And I'm looking forward to seeing what happens with the King's Moot, of course. And last, <laughs> last but not least, and yes, Ramsey does need to have an epic death. He does need to have an epic death, like epic uh, on a scale that I can't even imagine. Um, so, all right, so let's, let's get to the big, let's get to the big deal, all right? The Red Woman... We are back at Castle Black, and the Onion Knight is like, hey, can you bring this dude back? You know, and she's like, I don't know. I've never done this before. Whoa. You know, my God doesn't love me. And I loved it when, like, so the Red Woman and the Onion Knight have been kind of, like, at odds for so long, but now they're, like, the new odd couple where they're, like, thrown together in this. And I love that even though the Onion Knight, like, doesn't agree with her and, like, thinks she's kind of a terrible person, he still like comforts her when she's down because he's just a good guy like that. And he was like, you know, oh, like fuck him then, fuck all the gods, like fuck him, like don't worry about it, you know. And it was like so cute. I thought that was adorable. I liked seeing him uh, trying to comfort Melisandre. And then we, so so now we see the body. We got Jon Snow's body, and she's doing this sensual dead guy sponge bath that I was like, this is really sensual. Like, it's kind of odd. I don't know what I'm supposed to be feeling here because this is a dead body. I don't know why you're making me think sexy thoughts about a dead body. It's weird. But um, they did. And God, they teased that shit so much. Like, they've been teasing this stupid shit so much. And like, I'm just, every time they cut to his stupid face, like, is he going to open his eyes? You know, it's just like, just fucking do it already. Like, we all know, we all know that like, he's going to come back because everybody loves him. So now he's John Stoneheart, I guess. We don't get Caitlyn who in the books was, she's brought back uh, by uh, the Red Priest, uh, Mur guy, I can't remember his name right now, but he's, he brings her back and Beric dies and then she does that shit. So since she's not doing that, we're going to have Jon Stoneheart instead. Uh, I guess we'll see how the Night's Watch what takes to that like? shit. Um, what was that, what director? Was like when he comes back? Uh, well, I mean, okay, so what is Jon Snow going to be like after he comes back? Well, Beric Dondarrion was was very much the same. I mean, he he was changed by it in certain ways, obviously. I mean, you know, you die, you come back, you're going to be a little different. But overall, his personality traits didn't change. He was just more tired and a little more, like, tweaked out, I think. Um, so, yeah, I mean, and also, like, are they, are the Night's Watch going to want a zombie commander? Like, I don't know, you know? Like, I don't know how they're going to take to that at all. We'll see. Uh, is he going to stay in the Night's Watch or just leave? Like, maybe, he, I mean, I mean, he's dead. I mean, he did die for them, so I guess his oath is kind of up. I mean, he can kind of move on and not feel bad about it, which has been a real big thing this whole time. Um, and yes, Jason, Beric did get resurrected before it was cool. Uh, <laughs> glasses, totally. And that that is a character that I wish they had done, Beric Dondarrion, like a lightning lord. Like, he's so badass. I wish I could have seen more cool stuff with him, but whatever. Um, but yeah, so they bring him back, you know, they all leave the fucking room, they bring him back, and <gasps> he's like, you know, and I was just like, okay, fine, he's back, I guess. I, so did you guys think that they were going to bring Jon Snow back? Let's do another poll. How many of you out there thought, because I was like, they're totally going to bring him back, because they wouldn't keep showing his body if they're not going to bring him back. Like, that's just how TV writing works. It's very formulaic, you know, so it's just like, 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Just bring him back. Just bring him back. So that was this episode. I'm still going to watch like the whole, like I, I'm kind of like getting on the tip of like, even though there's there's definitely things that I like and I enjoy watching, you know, there's it's fun to hate on it too sometimes. So now I'm becoming like more of a troll, I guess. I don't know. I'm a Game of Thrones troll now. In fact, somebody on Instagram said that they didn't know if they could come back and watch this today because of all the negativity. So I'm too negative. Well, you do like certain things about the show. I do like certain things about the show. That's something that's weird where it's like, you guys want me to lie? You guys want me to lie to you about how I feel? I can't lie. Like, that's why you guys like me because I'm like fucking chill and honest about how I feel. You know, I'm just saying, you know, like, you can like it. Just because I don't dig it doesn't mean, you know, you can't like it. Poll results up. So, poll results. Yeah. You see, you, we all knew it. We all knew it. We all knew that he was coming back. You know, it's just like, ah, quit teasing me with that. It's not even a tease, guys. It's not even a tease. Like, you get, ugh, killing me. All right, we got Matt on line one. All right, Matt. Hey, Matt. What's, What's up, up, dude? <laughs> hey, uh, can, you, can you tell me about the Tower of Joy teaser for next uh, episode? The Tower of Joy. What do you think about that? Oh, okay. So uh, I, know you, I know you saw it. I may or may not have illegally downloaded it, so I didn't get. We it. all do. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was supposed to go to like this. Robots got robots got viruses, but yeah. I know, I know. It's like it's rampant. No, Matt, tell me what. Okay, tell me what you thought though. Tell me what happened. What I think is Ned Stark comes up and he's about to put the hurt on. Mm-hmm. Like he does, and people are gonna die, and we're gonna see it because Bran Stark is gonna go through the three. Yeah, right? Mm-hmm. And it's 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 something we've all been waiting for. Obviously, I mean, you as an enthusiast, I think, have been waiting for it for quite a while, and they're actually gonna put it in now to the show. Mm-hmm. But that's gonna get you more involved. But um, other than that, I think it's just it's it's good for the good for the show. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I think it's a great idea for them to start doing more flashbacks and mining that material because that's something that I do. Like like I said, when I saw Liana, I was like, oh my gosh, it's Liana. So if you guys need to like put some filler in there, like, okay, like you can show me some Tower of Joy. Like I'm totally down. Like, let's do it. You know, I would love to see um, what uh, ah, the Targaryen Prince Rhaegar. I would love to see a Ra- like. But, but then you can get the, the question to... Uh... Promise me, Ned. Say that one more time. You can get the question to promise me, Ned. Yeah. Walked up in there. If he actually walks up in there and she says, promise me, Ned, we might get the the answer, but I, I'm pretty sure we're not going to. Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll see, you know, it would be cool if like they, they could cheat it, you know, like I think they could maybe cheat it and like have a younger guy, but you don't really like, see his face or something like, oh, no. yeah, yeah, they'll cheat um, it. We're back. Oh, we're back. <laughs> okay. Hey, Michelle, what's up? Hi, it's good to see you guys again. Yes, absolutely. Good to see you. So talk to us. I am super stoked. I think that everything that they're doing right now, they're going straight towards confirming R plus L equals J, which is something that I've been invested in since I started Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. So I'm really excited for that. I also think the whole scene with the Boltons was pretty much setting us up for the Battle of the Bastards. Mm-hmm. I think that's something that's going to be... I. The, not very subtle hints, especially with um, Ramsey being so keen on John being such a threat. And we can already see what he's done with threats if he's already just shanked his dad. And I seriously thought he was going to throw the baby into a fire somewhere as well. So. I totally did. I totally did too. That was. <laughs> I was sitting next to my mom the whole time and she's like, he's not going to do it, is he? He's not going to do it? I was like, at this point, I have no idea. I have no idea. I so know. I just think it's it's not so subtle at this point anymore. I think it's getting very close to that's going to be the big thing. And they're having Sansa head up north. And I don't think John's going to stay at the wall very long. So it's it's gotten kind of predictable. But yeah, there are some things that I am very excited for. So if, when they confirm R plus L equals J, I'm with you. I hope that we get to see a Rhaegar scene. I think that would be incredible. Oh, so sick. Yeah. And I really like that we have how it's not just flashbacks, it's really like interactive. And we have an anchor there like Bran. And Bran is the one guiding us through it. And Bran is the one reminding us why these things are important. And when I saw that girl riding in on the horse, Mm -hmm. and I knew it was Liana, like the first thing I did was like grab my mom's shoulder. And she's like, what, what is it? And I I couldn't even explain. I was just like, that's Liana Stark. And Bran was actually there to explain. Like my father never talked about her and mystery and bringing it all up. So I'm, I'm really excited 
with some aspects and super excited for, you know, the Greyjoys. Like I said last week, I'm pretty sure the Greyjoy fleet is going to be the one that's going to come and get Danny out of Marine, hopefully towards the end of the season. Yeah, I mean, that would be awesome. And I think you're totally onto something there. Like, absolutely. I think you're totally right. Uh, and I was too, exactly. Like when Liana came up, uh, I was sitting next to T-Bone and I was like, oh, it's Liana. Like, oh, my goodness. I got so excited. To fangirl see. moment, right? Fangirl well, over Liana Stark. Total fangirl. Like, absolutely. <laughs> and also something that we didn't touch on earlier was it was interesting to see Hodor when he was younger and that he yes. could talk and like. You got Ben on line three. All right, Ben. Thanks, Michelle. All right, You're Ben. <laughs> hey. What's up? How's it going? All right, so I got a lot of questions for you. Um, do you think the Hound is coming back? Um, what do you think about all the actor changes? That's driving me nuts. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, as far as Jon Snow, you know, like, what's going on with Tormund? When the, I saw the preview for the next episode, and uh, he's, like, talking to the Red Woman. Like, do you think you're a god now? Yeah, so for the Hound, I'm not entirely sure. I would be surprised to see if the Hound came back. I would be surprised. Like, that would that would surprise me. Although I do think... Like Stannis, I feel like Stannis could come back for some reason. Like I feel like Stannis the Manus is still out there because we never saw him die, you know. But like, we'll see. But it would be it would be okay. amazing to see the Hound come back. Um, so tell me what character changes were bothering you? Because I noticed the Child of the Forest, but what else? Like, what did you notice? Um, Child of the Forest, uh, the Three Eyed Raven is different. <laughs> um, definitely uh, the guy with Daenerys, um, the second son's lieutenant. Oh, Dario. that one. Oh, Dario, that killed me. The other guy was way better. Yeah. Like, well, this one's so bland, and he's just like, uh. Well, yeah, you know, I, I didn't like the first one either. I thought he was really skeezy. But then again, okay, again, as a book reader, I love Dario from the book because he's super foppish. Like, he wears, like, the most, like, flamboyant clothing ever. And he has a blue beard yeah, and, like, a gold tooth and, like, yeah. – fucking yellow lace everywhere and like i was so stoked to see this asshole like he's such a colorful character that i was like disappointed that they like made him more rugged and less like pretty boy you know like t-bone yeah. t-bone asked do, do i think jorah mormont has a chance well now that he's got grayscale no he blew it like, he, he can't... Yeah, yeah but uh he, what's his name got cured yeah, well, I mean, they said that he could get cured, and I mean, the way the writing is, it's like he probably will find a fucking cure, you know, and it'll be yeah. fine. I, I hope he dies just because they're, they're bringing too many people back. Yeah, well, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's another thing that's like, you know, thinking from a comic book perspective. So, you know, in the comic books, like kind of before the 80s, when somebody died, they stayed dead. You know, it was like they stayed dead. And then uh, I think like one of the big characters that kind of changed all that, one of the big, big retcons was Jean Grey when they brought her back. After she died as Phoenix, they kind of did some shenanigans. They're like, oh, that wasn't really Jean Grey. Her body was at the bottom of the bay, and it was fine. Uh -huh. And then after that, it kind of broke the dam that anyone could come back. And it makes it less interesting when a character dies. And so now I feel like with Jon Snow coming back, you know, does, like, who else is going to, you know, it's like, all right, dam's broken. Like, who else is going to come back? Um, and sick. Michael Stannis, the new king of the White Walkers, would be sick. <laughs> like, <laughs> so be down to see I, I don't know why. I just like that actor for Stannis. Like, uh, I don't think yeah. they're going to bring Stannis back because, like, Ramsey and Roos kind of confirmed. He was like, I would give whoever money to whoever gave the killing blow. That's it for today, guys. we got to wrap up. Uh, we're going to take a 10-minute break, and, and then we're going to come back. We're going to be talking about Silicon Valley. And we will also be here again next week on Smile Time at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, please come back and check out our Game of Thrones Rewind. Thank you guys so much for checking it out and asking me the awesome questions. Thank you to everybody who came on today. You guys totally rocked it. Uh, yeah, so, all right, 10-minute break. Coming back, Silicon Valley.